Hello there, I'm Alice Banks. And now for a look to see how markets in Europe have ended the trading session. And they took their cue from the falls that we saw overnight in Asia. It's all thanks to China continuing to fuel fears about its economy by allowing the yuan to weaken further and that nuclear test by North Korea as well, also adding to a growing list of geopolitical worries. And particularly here in the UK, it's those concerns over China that got commodity-related companies stumbling because it's a very commodity-heavy index, uh, the former, of course, being one of the world's largest consumer of metals. And uh, talking of uh, consuming, the first week of January, January is also when a lot of retailers can truly gauge the success or not of the festive buying frenzy. And one winner out of the pack is John Lewis, which saw sales rise 5% over what it calls the three peaks of Christmas, Black Friday, Christmas itself, and then New Year sales. Online sales were up 21%, helping to offset a fall that we saw in store sales. We also got numbers uh, for the UK service sector in December today, where growth fell uh, in a key survey. Uh, this comes after Monday's figures are showing that manufacturing grew at its lowest pace for three months. But today was really all about that falling price of oil kicking off the new year in much the same volatile spirit of the last. The cost of Brent per barrel today plummeted to its lowest levels in 11 years to below $35 a barrel. It's blamed on oversupply and the ongoing row between key producers Iran and Saudi Arabia. And just in the last hour, in fact, more excitement, the price per barrel slumped to a new New low for the day of 34.46. It has just crept back up uh, to 34.71. But uh, let's get more on this now and talk to Laura Lambie, Senior Investment Director at Investec Wealth and Investments. Uh, Laura, good to talk to you. Uh, there you are. So there we have it. In the past hour, the, the roller coaster continues in terms of the price of Brent. At the end of last year, we had Goldman Sachs releasing a report saying it saw the price go as low as $20 a barrel. But then we also had OPEC saying that it's thought it could reach 70 come 2020. So where do you see the price going? I, I think the, the rumours of $20 a barrel um, are, are unlikely, um, probably likely to stabilise around the, the $50 barrel. And although we get excited about the price of oil and plummeting, uh, we should remember that the world is a net beneficiary of a low oil price. It means that consumers and companies um, are better off, they're paying less for their fuel and they're paying less for their energy. So I suppose it has to be taken in some sort of context. And Laura, when we look at the geopolitical backstory to all of this, normally when you've got the largest and the fifth largest oil producers in OPEC fighting, we'd expect to see a spike in the price. So why are we seeing this continuing fall? Well, Saudi and Iran um, have, have fallen out. Um, as two of the, the biggest members of OPEC, it was to be hoped that they might come to an agreement to curtail the supply of oil. As it stands, Saudi Arabia is very keen to protect its market share. Um, it's keen to see some of the, uh, the more costly competitors um, go by the wayside. Um, and and that's, what it, that's why it is holding out. It's continuing to, to produce huge amounts of oil. And obviously we've got Iran after the sanctions are lifted this year. It will also be doing exactly the same. So uh, as you say, it's a supply side story with supply uh, really outstripping demand at the moment. Yeah, one that we're going to be talking about for many many months to come, I suspect, Laura. Uh, moving on, how worried should we be about this slight dip that we saw in the services sector in December, given how important this sector is for the UK economy? It really helped to offset some rather poor numbers that we had out uh, for both uh, construction and manufacturing. Yes, for many, many months, the service sector um, has been the, the growth um, side of the UK economy. And as you see, it has, has subsidised poor and weak manufacturing side of things. Uh, and there are some causes for concern. Um, more specifically, there's a lot of um, economic and political pressures, some headwinds coming up in 2016, not least the referendum in Europe. We've got big government spending cuts. And of course, we've got probably um, one or maybe two rises in UK interest rates. So there is some uncertainty out there and, and that's being reflected in, in these um, confidence surveys that um, we've had in the service sector.
Okay, Laura, we're going to have to leave it there, but always good to talk to you, Laura Lambie there of Investec. Quick reminder for you now of how the FTSE uh, finished the session here in London, falling on concerns over China, led by a stumbling in commodity-related companies. And it's a similar picture over in the United States, where all three major indices fell more than a percent at the open. Investors are looking for safe havens after Chinese authorities allowed the currency to weaken further. And, of course, those oil prices falling to their lowest in more than 11 years. All of this already has got traders that I've been talking to today musing over the potential impact of Shanghai on world equities for the rest of 2016. Because if market moves this week are any guide, the swings in China will exert a major sway despite it's actually relatively low equity uh, weighting in global terms. Also, I can just tell you uh, Brent crude has ticked up slightly to uh, 34.57, a slight uh, delay on that. Full roundup of all the other top business stories available on our website, of course. Just head to bbc.co.uk forward slash business. That's all from me today. Back to you both.